Pillai Punswad is a well-known figure in Thailand. For more than 30 years, she has dedicated her life to the protection of the hornbill, the emblematic bird of the Thai forests. My hornbill study began uh, in 1978. Inspiration is, was the, uh, the bird, you know. I saw the great hornbill at the nest. And then uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning, the uh, male came and right to the nest. So from that on, you know, I, I, I was very impressed. After her first encounter with this intriguing bird, the biologist decided to create a foundation to study, treat, and protect hornbills in Thailand's three largest national parks. Today, she has earned the affectionate nickname, the Grandmother of the Hornbills. Of the 54 kinds of hornbills found on Earth, Thailand is home to 13. Right from the beginning of the Hornbill project, Pilai Poonswad was concerned about the precarious situation of these birds, threatened by logging and poaching. Through patience and determination, Pilai has set up a network of partners who work alongside her to protect the hornbills and their habitat. I had two phases of approach, you know. First, uh, action is or immediate action is how to stop poaching. And my goal is to increase the pop hornbill population. We have to, to uh, encourage, but to educate, and also do the campaign, and also create the awareness of the, how important of the forest Accompanied by her research assistants, Pilai makes regular visits to the Budo Sungai Padi National Park in the south of Thailand, which has been crawling with guerrillas for many years. The armed conflict around the jungle does not make Pilai's task any easier, especially when she goes up into the mountains to observe the behavior of hornbills during their breeding period. The hornbill lives mainly in Southeast Asia, India, and Africa. To reproduce, it needs virgin forests, where it can find a cavity large enough to make its nest among the huge trees. After pairing, and then the, the pair will seek for nest hole when uh, breeding season comes. They, uh, they have uh, courtship feeding. What fascinating me is the, the behavior. Yeah, the behavior that they, you know, seal the nest and the way it's a kind of ritual. When she is ready to lay, the female walls herself up inside the nest to prevent predators such as monkeys, snakes, or monitor lizards from attacking her eggs. She leaves only a small opening through which the male regurgitates food to feed her and her chicks. A male may have a payroll, you know, in helping her by provide some material like bark, like uh, earth, you know, the mud, you know, depend on species. And it takes about seven, uh, three to seven days normally. After more than an hour's walk up a steep track, Pillai arrives at the site where the most imposing Asiatic hornbill, the Great Hornbill, builds its nests. Endowed with a voluminous hollow cask, which acts as a sound box to amplify its calls, the bird can grow to heights of up to one meter. When the nests are not too far away, like this one, we usually work at about 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning and remain at our posts until 4 p.m. Then we go home. We do that every day.
In oppressive humidity and temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius, the team gets to work constructing the blind that will serve as an observation post. Besides her research assistants, Pillai is accompanied by villagers, most of whom are former poachers. They are particularly useful when the time comes to discover new nests. In spring, they are the only ones who carry out examination of nests and make sure they are in a fit state to welcome the female. The poacher, you know, uh, uh, I use them as a guide and train them, told them how to uh, keep the record and, you know, to observe. And so they participated in my project a bit by bit, you know. Then from there, they develop the, uh, a kind of relationship between them and the hornbill that they watch. They would concern about the safety of the, that hornbill that they watch. Thailand isn't the only country where hornbills are suffering the effects of human activities. In Singapore, just a one-hour flight from southern Thailand, the hornbill is practically extinct. Thanks to a partnership with certain zoological gardens of Thailand, Mark Kremades, an expert in animal reproduction, is working on reintroducing the hornbill into protected areas in Singapore's national parks. Hornbills disappeared in the late 19th century, around 1890. But the first couple to breed again in Singapore did so on a satellite island, not even on Singapore main island. This was in 1994, a hundred years later. The natural environment has completely disappeared aside from a few patches of forest, which are usually national parks or protected forests. So there was a real sense of urgency. Having had experience of working in the wilderness, I thought we had to find new avenues of investigation. You can't stop human progress. It's impossible. So the issue is how to bring back forest animals that need a dense forest, how to get them back on an island that has one of the densest human populations in the world. The morning is the best time to observe hornbills. The male has rested during the night, and he's busy in the morning, looking for food. He keeps going back and forth, again and again, looking for various types of food, if he has the energy. The hornbill feeds mostly on fruit, its favorite food being figs, which represent 73% of its diet. But if the opportunity arises, it will also capture insects, small reptiles, birds, and rodents. It has an important role in disperse the seed, also regenerate the forest, because hornbill uh, feed on fruit and regurgitate bit by bit wherever you know, they perch. So that way it's very good to dis distribute or, or disperse the seed. So hornbill play a very important role in keeping uh, the, the forest or maintain the diversity of plant in the forest. While hornbills were almost extinct in the early days of the project back in 1994, there are now around 200 nests and more than 500 birds in the Budo Park. Unfortunately, trees suitable for hosting new mating couples are becoming increasingly rare. That is even more the case in Singapore, where the forest is almost non-existent. So how can the problem be overcome in such a built-up environment? The hornbill needs a large cavity to build its nest in. According to the Singapore authorities, a tree with a large hole in it is dangerous and likely to fall on account of the preponderance of lightning, wind and storms. So it wasn't long before they said, look, we want to support this population, but it is difficult for us to keep these trees with big holes. They're a danger to people. 
Can't we think in terms of an artificial solution? We set up our first intelligent nest in the wild for a mating couple whose tree had been cut down. Their nest had been destroyed and burned, so as soon as the mating season came along, they immediately began searching for a cavity, and we gave them a very basic cavity. And they adopted this prefabricated nest in the very first year. So the following year, we thought, well, if you accepted this nest so readily, maybe we'll change it a little. Of the 25 artificial nests set up in Singapore, six are so-called intelligent nests. When designing them, researchers sought to gain a better understanding of how hornbills reproduce. Every nest is equipped with six cameras linked up to a control room. This surveillance system records all activity 24 hours a day in and around the nest. Every family of sensors, including optical sensors, the camera has revealed behavior. The female remains in the nest first alone for three months with her eggs and chicks. She replenishes all her main feathers. You can imagine a bird in a hole 30 centimeters wide by 60 or 70 centimeters high for three months. There's a lot of stuff. We have scales so that when the male brings food to the nest, we can measure his weight every day, every time he lands. We also know the weight of the food he passes on. And thanks to the cameras, we can identify the foods. So all this helps us better define the animal's needs and their restrictions in order to intensify our conservation efforts. In Thailand a few years ago, Pillai and her partners set up artificial nests in Budo Park, where the species of tree most sought after by hornbills is still targeted by illegal loggers. A lot of large tree gone. So that's why here we consider to have uh, artificial nests. But here also very difficult to, to repair because the nest tree are very high and, you know, to access. Our job is finished for today. The hornbill has devoted itself to its usual occupations, as it does every day. There's no change, nothing abnormal. During the period of hornbill nesting, Pillai regularly visits the 11 villages taking part in the project to meet the villagers. Thanks to private donations collected by the foundation and the sponsorship of hornbills by Thai families, Pillai has hired more than 50 villagers since the project started to monitor nests. Most are former poachers who can now meet the needs of their families while protecting the natural environment. Each village, each group, you know, will report it. How many nests that they are, uh, you know, under their responsibility or under their watching, they checking, and then how many nests uh, still, you know, carry on for breeding, or how many nests fail already, and what are the the problem, and how to solve that problem for the, you know next breeding season. As well as this action with the villagers, Pillai and Preda give workshops to school children to raise awareness of the beauty and also the fragility of these birds. <laughs> It's nearly gone from Thailand, I mean from Thailand. I will pay attention to the national uh, status, you know, conservation status of the species because it's our 
our animal, right? So like to to conserve. แล้วก็เด็กๆพวกนี้จะนะเป็นตัวแทนพี่ปิดาให้มากต่อไปในอนาคตนะเอาขึ้นแหละใช่ป่ะเนาะได้ไหมสอนต่อไปลูกสอนรุ่นน้องต่อใช่ไหมเนี่ยอ n o r d e r to observe hornbills in their natural environment, Pillai must often travel large distances in search of certain rarer species. As such, she has never had an opportunity to see a black hornbill in the wild. However, in the region of Sungai, some villagers claim to have seen the mysterious bird. After an hour and a half of driving, Pillai arrives at the swamp from where she sets off to the bird watching blind that Prada has set up. Somebody, you know, uh, informed us that they saw black horn bill around. Ah, so that we we kept uh, checking every year. While 13 species of hornbill are found in Thailand, some are very seldom seen, and more than half are facing the threat of extinction. The shrinking of the forests is the principal reason. The subject of territory is a key one. It's been demonstrated for thousands of species that without human intervention, and if the population is stable and the environment is sufficiently rich for a particular species, then it will flourish very, very well. And if the area is extended, then the species will colonize it. Uh, not just birds, but also insects and even large mammals. All the work we did in Singapore the investigative and development work carried out in Singapore for more than six years was difficult to reproduce in Thailand. What she's continuing to do in Thailand today is impossible since the animals disappeared. So she has carried on the job that she does so well, carried on mobilizing people. And what we're going to do is to try and bring the best possible tools for conditions on the ground which are much more difficult in Thailand than they are in Singapore. This one is so sensitive. So we have to, to hide ourselves very well, completely, and have to be very quiet. I, I ever survey, you know, what long time ago, the area where they say that there's the existence of this this species, but never succeeded. Only the, the villagers told us that, okay, there's, there's a black hornbill, but never, never saw. Because sometimes the villager also uh, mis uh, uh, what mistaken with the other species, you know. This is our first black hornbill nest in 17 years. So we are very happy. Yeah? Because uh, this species is very, very rare. So for, for Thailand, you know, uh, we consider this as critical endangered species because they inhabit in uh, lowland forest. Since lowland forest has, you know, been shifted for cultivation, for plantation, that's why they lost habitat. Got 
in Budo, I'm very happy that I could, you know, work with the villagers and our team, you see, and can increase like 500 individuals of six species within 17 years. The population is maybe too small to recover because just only one nest, you know, within how many years? So it must have been very, very rare. Wow, one last. I hope that, you know, uh, we can find more. We really have to raise the general awareness. And Pillai, in Thailand and in Asia, has really been a pioneer because she's awakened people's curiosity. She understood that you have to broaden the audience around nature. So I think we need to use every tool available if we're to succeed in changing what there is still time to change. Seeing the change in mentality among her Thai partners and their commitment to protecting the hornbill, Pilai Poonswad can hope for a better future for the species. After all these years spent defending her protégés, the grandmother of the hornbills is still as passionate as ever about these birds, which she regards as tremendous ambassadors. I think Hornbill can be rec uh, can be treated uh, or recognized as umbrella species because they they uh, they cover wide area and also they interact with so many diverse species. So if you protect hornbill, you protect other species.